Yo, yo, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Trippy Commentaries. Thanks for joining me in Grand Theft Auto V. I'm RJ, joining up here on Portola Drive with Danny Coldblood. What's happening, Danny? What's going on, Trippy? Thanks again for having me on the show, man. This is going to be awesome. The reason why we're bringing Music Video here on today is because one of his first videos on his channel was The Secret of Portola Drive. And I think in two years, Danny has learned quite a bit about this mystery, and there's a lot more that we can add to that episode. I'll put a link in the description. I don't know if Danny wants you to watch it, because it's quite old, but I gotta say, it's still actually very good, so I definitely recommend you guys check it out. But that said, there's so much more we can add. You'll be very surprised to see where it all ends. But thanks again for joining up. So Danny, what first led you to the infamous Portola Drive? Honestly, it might have been the name. I'm pretty sure it was the name, because... Portola always just reminded me of the word portal, and there's a lot of uh, stuff in this game that makes me think that we can do crazy shit like teleport or space and time travel. So I thought there might be a connection, and then going on Portola Drive, man, the clues are everywhere. So I just was one thing after another when it came to the street. So one thing that kind of stands out about this place is the multiple references to Red Dead Redemption. We've been talking about that a lot in the past. You can see right here on the side you have the Redemption Cafe and the logo for the Redemption Cafe. You guys have probably seen it before. I don't know if it's on this one, Danny, but it is what looks to be a boar. Of course, you guys remember the legendary boar. Ah, there it is, from Red Dead Redemption. Its name was Gordo. So uh, what references have you noticed here on Portola Drive with Red Dead Redemption? Oh, man, there's so much. There's... uh. Well, first of all, Michael's house is at the uh, very end of the street, and there's horses in his house and all the connections with him, having the same powers as John Marston with the dead eye. Um, you got, just like you showed off, Cafe Redemption, which leads to Mount Gordo. And Mount Gordo, the boar, was a legendary animal, man, in Red Dead Redemption. And legendary, and the word legend is a huge thing in the mystery. We know that Legend of the West is a platinum trophy for Red Dead Redemption, and that's actually a picture of that steel horse right there. So there's so much, man. I can go on and on. There's a, a lot of clues, Rocks, that are loaded off here in Portola Drive. I know some of you guys are asking, you know, maybe that's not even involved with the mystery. Red Dead Redemption could possibly just be referring to Red Dead Redemption 2 coming out in the future, because you gotta remember, when this game first came out, we didn't officially know about Red Dead Redemption 2. It was one of the worst kept secrets that Rockstar had, but it could be possible clues that Red Dead Redemption 2 is coming. I still think that Red Dead Redemption and these clues are connected to Michael. And as Danny said already, Portola Drive all leads to Michael's house. So we'll show off exactly what Portola Drive is before we get to some really crazy stuff. But check it out, Danny. What's the chances that here in the core, not only do you have the place where the first heist happened, and you pointed out to me that it was a jewelry store heist. Right above us, you actually have what looks to be a hidden diamond on the map. And then here, you even have an Epsilonist, Danny. Talking about some interesting stuff, you have, you know, only some people can hear the trees. Let's see what they're saying here. Do you want happiness or do you want the truth? Do you want success, a great and varied sex life? Oh, I think we all want that. And a satisfying re relationship with the only thing you can change. The truth. Aha. And it's time to embrace America's religion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll get out of here at this point. So uh, what do you think, Danny? Any coincidence that you have the Epsilonist right here on Portola as well? And uh, I do want to point out this pretty epic looking seal that's here. What do you think, Danny? Yeah, that is pretty, pretty crazy, man. Um... You know, you were pointing out that diamonds, and in real life, there's a conspiracy back in the day about how there's underground alien and reptilian civilizations. And right there, that jewelry, uh, you know, marker on the map, if you will, underneath that is, uh, in the game, it's the public library. And in real life, in Los Angeles, one of the biggest underground reptilian, like, dwellings, if you will, was under the public library in Los Angeles. So, I mean, they put a lot of work into that building. It's a big, like, landmass. So maybe, just maybe, they are uh, hinting at a lot of different stuff here. We know that there's a uh, chance that, what's his name, uh, Chris Formage might be a reptilian, as in that cutscene, people stopped it and seen how his eyes are almost reptilian. So, I mean, a lot of stuff, man. A lot of crazy shit going on here. We do have the horse, kind of the landmark 
of Portola Drive, but it doesn't really start off there. It goes all the way to Michael's house. So let's check this out. Now, uh, I think you mentioned, Danny, this is all based off of Rodeo from Los Angeles, one of the most popular roads in, in America, I would say. Plenty of songs about it. So here's the beginning of Portola. You have Michael's Casa right here. Interesting how we lined up all these things to Michael, Danny, and you have Michael's house marking perhaps either the very end or the beginning of the road. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and, and go down this road. I, I was definitely surprised, you know, when you're telling me everything, and of course you have the video that you made itself, the fact that it all leads to Michael's house. Very strange. Yeah, I would say if there's anyone most connected with the uh, past of Roxo when looking at Red Dead Redemption, man, it's got to be Michael. His uh, special abilities is almost the same as John Larson, where you get to do the, you know, quick precision aiming it's called Dead Eye. Um, you got uh, Michael having the sculpture of a torso in his house. Okay, not only does he have that and uh, pictures or uh, statues of horses, but that um, torso is a direct reference to that big steel horse on Portola, as it's all a pun on the uh, artist that sculpted that stuff. So, pretty crazy shit, man. So it all leads to the, I don't know, is this Vespucci Beach? I don't know if this is considered Vespucci Beach right here. I think it is. I know yeah, I think that's Vespucci, yeah. Anyways, it leads to this big sculpture. It was something else when the game first was released, so I'm not exactly sure what this represents. Definitely massive. But with all the sculptures we've been talking about, especially the horse in the real world, of course on Rodeo, you have the torso sculpture. Here you have the horse, which seems to be possibly a reference and an Easter egg towards Red Dead Redemption. As Danny mentioned, the torso that should be there can be found in Michael's house. Interesting, we'll show that off here later on in the video. With all this talk of underground tunnels, we must head to the underground tunnels of Portola Drive. So the name of the video, when you first put it out there, Danny, was a possible secret portal on Portola Drive. You think there's anything to that? I know there's a big uh, mural, I guess we'll call it, underground that looks like it could be something. Yeah, you know, that was part of my whole thinking when I was making that video because when I was led here because of the name, I went down into that subway uh, entrance and the pictures there, I wasn't as um, experienced in the mystery at that time, so I didn't really realize that Rockstar used a lot of mirroring. I mean, we had mirror parts. There's a whole bunch of mirroring that Rockstar does, so I didn't really realize that. So looking at the picture down there, um, we have two horses and everything's mirrored. And we know now that that could be a big relevance when looking at clues. So it could be related to clues. I think it really is. And when you look at that, to me, it always just made me feel like I could jump through it or something. I know it sounds silly, yeah. but it just looks mystical. Or like you could see that turning into a portal. So you're kind of talking about how it's mirrorized. I'm also noticing how it represents the entire road. You have the sales tags there on the left, the palm trees, which are on both sides, all leading to the sun at the very end and you talked about the sculpture there that big horse and the artist who made it you think that that's an easter egg oh that's definitely at least a nod to the artist and red dead redemption in my opinion um the the statue of the horse says robert chala on that and it's a parody of californian based sculptor robert graham and robert graham actually did the sculpture not of a horse but of a torso we can find that torso on Portola Drive at the very end or beginning at Michael's house in his living room next to other statues, which are horses. So, yeah, it goes full circle with the clues in there. Definitely giving a nod to the artist as well, which is awesome. So definitely a lot of cool shit. Yeah, as we just showed off as well on top of it, one of the many references back to Red Dead Redemption with Chala Springs. You also have Escalera down there. I believe Escalera's in Grand Theft Auto V Armadillo. Any other references from the map that you can think of? Not much. We have uh, Chala Springs, Armadillo. We have uh, Escalera, which is um, pretty crazy because Escalera has a, uh, a sign right next to its subway um, stairs, and that says, go to Cortola. 
And we know that the word Bigfoot rearranged it says go to FIB. And Bigfoot is a huge link between Red Dead and GTA 5 as one of the damn missions, cuts, uh, cinema scenes are basically identical to each other. So you can find Red Dead clues all over the place. Whoa, I just tried to jump through the wall thinking maybe it is indeed a portal. And I noticed Trevor's head kind of went through. Let's try it again. Here we go. Let's try this again, guys. Go through. No portal to be found, but I still think it looks pretty trippy. And you noticed the coffee bean right here. Perhaps another Easter egg, Danny? Yeah, when I see this, man, I think of the hot coffee mod that Rockstar has had in San Andreas. Okay, so we are in the same location again. Um, but I do believe it's at $8 for a coffee or something similar to that on uh, <laughs> the uh, reference that I'm bringing up here. But you know what's funny, Trippy, is the hot coffee mod was never supposed to be found. It was definitely a secret within the game. And what if that's there for a reason, kind of symbolizing the secret that might be right before our eyes here? I mean, it does look like you can jump through it. It's enticing. That's why I made that video, Portal Up, Portal. I mean, it's just a whole art of it makes me think I could jump through it or get portaled into another place or dimension. So, dude, a lot of crazy stuff going on here, man. But I wish Trevor the best of luck as he tries to get through that damn painting. Well, you know what we must do, Danny. It's only right. We have wired up the Portola painting or the Portola mural with sticky bombs, maybe this is how you activate the infamous Portola portal. Fire in the hole! We're going through! And uh, we did go through, but I think we went through to the afterlife. We're back here at Michael's Palace, and as you can see on one side you have the horse, and on the other side you have the torso, and I never noticed that until Danny told me. So the torso is the horse, and the horse is the torso, and you have them right here in one place at Michael's house, which of course is at the very end of Portola Drive. It all comes together, Danny, it's crazy. It's pretty crazy because it's like the duality of them. We have the picture underground, okay, at the subway station on Portola Drive, two horses almost mirrored facing each other, and right there we have the horse and the torso right next to each other also, so it's pretty nuts, man. Pretty Look at this one stuff. right here, right in the middle, kind of shown off in the living room, looking pretty crazy. A lot of references to Michael in Red Dead Redemption. I'm not sure if maybe they'll bring back to Santa in this next Red Dead Redemption 2, now coming out next year. Right, like, think about it. Michael sleeps for six hours a day, and when you're John Marston and you go to bed, he sleeps for six hours a day. There's a lot of connections. Uh, even this artist, the artist's name was Robert Graham, um, and, you know, they pun that with Robert Chala that's on the horse sculpture over on Portola. But you got to think, Robert Chala, they named him Robert Chala for a reason. It connects to a street in GTA 5, Chala Springs, which actually intersects another street, Armadillo. Now, those are both places in Red Dead Redemption, but at that intersection, we have the infamous Infinite Eight Killer's house. Now, we do know that he likes the number eight. 8888 eight, eight, eight everywhere. Now think about this. 88 miles per hour, okay? We know Back to the Future stresses. That's how you travel back in time, right? Now what if Portola Drive is hinting at a portal? Maybe we need to use a space docker or something to break that 88 mile per hour threshold. Maybe we can portal ourselves through into something amazing. Like who knows, a jetpack, another dimension. We'll, we'll freaking meet these aliens one-on-one -on -one and uh, we'll give them a... A good run for their money. Who knows what it may be, but there is no denying, dude. There's so much Red Dead Redemption clues and references, and it goes full circle. It all tingles like a web, but it ends up full circle. So I really do believe that some of these, like you said, might be a reference to Red Dead 2. Definitely hints, in my opinion. Hopefully it's not going full circle to them finally giving us the jetpack in motherfucking Red Dead Redemption 2. That would be pretty messed up. Any last words, Danny? Thanks again for joining us up. We had to revisit the infamous Portola Drive. And guys, actually stay tuned because we will have a Portola live stream. It'll be totally interactive. We'll be walking around online. So you guys might even be able to join us. And we have so much more to talk about with this place, Danny. It's definitely interesting how it all leads to Michael's house. It makes me think that Michael's involved with all this somehow. Oh, man, definitely. I mean, they even gave him the name Deadeye, or, or that ability Deadeye, 
Mm-hmm. And that's the same ability John Marsden has. Yeah. It's so and the much, name dude. DeSanta. There's a lot to talk about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, DeSanta, DeSanta. There's so much to talk about. That live stream we're going to do, man, it's going to kick ass. I can't wait. Definitely check out Music Video's channel if you have not already, guys. I highly recommend it as he covers some pretty unique stuff. You know, a lot of people have their own take on the Chiliad mystery, but there's some people that, I don't know, they just notice certain things that other people can't, and Danny is certainly one of them, so show him some love. But much love to you guys as well. Thanks for checking out the video. Like it if you do not mind. That really helps out, guys. Stay tuned. Join us for the live stream. But more importantly, as always, stay motherfucking trippy, my friends.